Um, this is another Peruvian cooking made easy. This is going to be pasta de horno. It's called pasta de horno. Basically, it's uh, it's kind of like mac and cheese, but it's different. And it's easy, and it's awesome. It's one of my favorite Peruvian dishes I've ever had. And it's so easy and so tasty. Um, basically, what we're going to do here is we're going to get some pasta cooked. Um, we use spaghetti. I've seen other variations where they use elbow pasta, use penne. You can use any pasta you want, really. We use spaghetti. And it's just the easiest for us. Um, and then get that done, and then we'll brown up some, some ground beef. 80-20 um, is best for flavor, I think. And just, it's up to you also, whatever you know, whatever beef you want to use. I think, I think it's pretty much got to be beef, but you can try other meats if you want. Um, we'll brown the beef, and then we'll put that in with the pasta in a casserole dish. And then um, you'll need some milk and a couple eggs. We'll hard boil the eggs. Um, I'll show you. I'll show you that coming up. That's the basic stuff: spaghetti, ground beef, eggs, and milk. And then we'll. I'll show you the seasonings and stuff here in just a second. Okay, seasonings for pasta de horno: just the usual basics: salt, pepper, uh, cumin, paprika. And uh, I, I like to put garlic in. I don't know if, if uh, Luis is gonna put garlic in. It's up to you. It adds more flavor, I think. Okay, pasta is done. In the strainer, drying out. Okay, we're gonna do the beef. This is how we like to do it. Olive oil or whatever vegetable oil you want to use. Since our kids gonna be eating this, we used to we use more olive oil. Um, what's the burner? Hmm? What's the burner? Okay, so the oil goes in first, and then. Um, minced garlic. Sometimes we use our own because I have garlic in the garden outside. Um, but right now I don't have any, so we're using stuff out of the jar, which is which is okay. Minced garlic. It's it's unflavored. It's an oil. Um, and then an onion. We use the we use strictly purple onions. I think they have a little bit more higher sugar content. I could be wrong, um, but they don't seem to be to burn. The eyes is bad and they're spicy and, and our kid eats them when, when they're cooked. So we use the purple ones for anything. Sometimes if I make salsa I'll use a white onion but I'm the only one that eats it so it didn't, didn't matter. Anyway, um, give these guys a mince also and then we'll go right into the oil with the garlic. There's a trick I heard, I don't know, I've never tried it, but if you do use them, cut the onions that burn your eyes and you can maybe avoid it if you smear some olive oil on your knife. I don't know if that's true or not. Never tried it. But who knows? Okay, so the minced onion goes into the oil. That's about all it takes, not very much. If you don't want to overpower the meat. Maybe just a little bit more. Um get my Okay, so that's all that we're going to put in for now. We'll put this over medium heat, and then we'll we'll throw in the 80-20. we get about a pound, pound and a half of it there. We're ready to go. Be back okay, in a minute. Okay, so we have the pasta done. And that's going to heat up and saute just for a second before we throw the beef in. Medium heat. Okay, and then the third thing that I mentioned earlier is eggs. And with this dish, we're gonna hard boil three eggs. These are just large um, double A eggs, great A eggs. Um, what the is for as well as? Takes about 10 minutes to hard boil the eggs. And then, then you gotta let them cool for when you peel a shell, you have to burn your hands. It can take a little while. When that thing, when this starts sizzling, give it a little spin with the spoon so it doesn't burn. And then it only takes about a minute or less. And then we're gonna throw that beef in on top of it. And if you leave the leave the garlic and onions in there for too long, it doesn't take very long. If you leave it in there too long, it'll burn. It'll turn black and, and horrible and, and, and tastes like tastes like charcoal. So that's essentially what it's turning into, carbon. 
So don't, it didn't take very long. We're not even going to caramelize them or anything. Just get them, just get them sweating, if even that. Okay, and then the beef goes in on top of it. Um, and then we'll go ahead and break that down with a wooden spoon. Get this stuff going. On top or no? Yeah. Okay. Want to the carne and these move just a little? Yeah. Because the beef should take about 10, 12 minutes. So if you got a big enough stove, you can do all three of these things at once. Get the beef, you get the pasta, get the hard boiled egg, all at the same time. And this can take 15 minutes. What? Okay, we're gonna go ahead and put the top on this thing and let it go. We top, uh, we usually top them if we want to keep the, the moisture in. If you let that go too long without a lid, it can, it can dry out. 80-20 probably won't happen because it's 20% fat, of course. We'll keep that nice and juicy. Um, but it also cuts down on the onion in the air. That can get bother people's eyes. Or, and then garlic can bother people's eyes also. So, 10 to 12 minutes. Give it a stir once in a while. 10 to 12 minutes. Make sure and give those bad boys a turn about halfway through so they can cook more evenly. And we'll be back. Season this meat a little bit. Um, so far it just has the garlic, olive oil, and the onion in there. Um, now it's just a little bit of salt. We don't want to overdo it. Yeah. Kind of few don't you put in there. We don't put in very much salt in our food. Um, a little bit of black pepper, again, just, just the flavor, just the season. And paprika. Okay, baby. It's just regular paprika. It's not anything fancy. Right into the meat. And then bad boy stir. And let it keep going. It's almost done. So we season towards the middle, towards the end of the cooking process. I think sometimes when we season too soon, it kind of burns up in the cooking process and you kind of lose some of it. So if you wait too long, then it doesn't get a chance to fully um, integrate its flavors either. So you kind of have to find a happy spot in there, I think. So we usually kind of wait toward between the middle and the end of the cooking process. Okay, almost done. Um, check for doneness. Simply, we check by just how they feel. <laughs> they feel a little bit heavier, then you might give them a try. You can always put them back in the in the water if they're not done. Anyway, this is the boring part. <laughs> Peel these hard boiled eggs. Okay, we got a 9 by 13 casserole dish. It fits perfectly. We're going to grease this thing up a little bit. And you can use you can use a spray, canola spray if you want, or a little oil and smear it around and use butter. Go ahead and preheat the oven now to 350. Preheat the oven to 350 at this um at this point. Keep there's throw a pinch of butter in the pan and stuff. Okay, that's what she has in her finger. She's just squeezing some out and mixing it into the pasta a little bit. Say hi. Say hi. <laughs> He's eating some mom's cooking. Anyway, um, toss that with a little bit of butter. And then grease the pan Hi. so the stuff doesn't stick when it goes in the oven. I know it seems like a lot of butter, but it's just enough that it sticks to the pasta. Most of it stays in the, in the pan because there's nothing really to absorb it or pick it up. So it'll be at the bottom of the pan, a lot of it will. Anyway, just enough to grease. And then, sorry, then we get a layer of pasta. You don't want to put all of it in at once, probably half. See? About, about half of it first. Okay. 
get the half of that pasta in there, and then we'll spoon in the beef right on top of that. Uh, how much you put in there is up to you. We, we go pretty generous because this is supposed to be a meal here. So we want to get enough in there that we feel satisfied. Not overstuffed, but satisfied. So that was about a pound and a half of beef. I don't think we're going to throw all that in here. So it might be a pound. A pound of beef in here. And you can get six servings. I'll show you when we cut this thing later. Serving. She's going to throw it all in there. About a pound, pound and a half, pound and a quarter of beef. Yeah, it's all going in. Because I'm hungry today. <laughs> okay, and you spread that out about as even as you can. And then here comes the hard boiled egg right on top of that. She's just going to put slices on top. Uh, if you want to mince this up, you can and sprinkle it on there, kind of like the beef. Uh, this is kind of up to you again. Sprinkle when they're rice. One of the beautiful things about Peruvian cooking is you can really tailor these dishes to your own cooking styles and, and flavor palettes. And you can really mess with these recipes and still get the same kind of result. Yes. Poner pasas, rice. Pasas poner, no, um, One thing that's, tr that's kind of traditional in Peru that we don't really do because none of us like them is you can put raisins in this dish. Um, there's several dishes that call for raisins and we just don't really eat them that much, so we don't put them in the food. It adds a little bit of a sweet flavor to it, a little bit of tartness to it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's another thing you can put in there. I imagine you could throw in dates or something if you'd like. I mean, these aren't written in stone, so you can you can play around with this a little bit, you know. Okay, that's three, three hard-boiled eggs. And then in goes the rest of the pasta on top. Okay, we're just gonna cover cover all of that with the rest of the pasta. Okay, and then the last couple things that will go on top, um, we use queso fresco. Um, you can use mozzarella if, if you have trouble finding queso fresco. Mozzarella works just as well. Give it a crumble. The shredded mozz, you can use the wheel of mozz and just crumble it however you want to do it, you know. Just goes right on top of this. And you can add as much as you want, or as little as you want. Uh, we love queso fresco. We'll do queso fresco for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We'll put it on, on toast. We'll just eat it straight out of the bag. Okay, the cheese is on, and now the last thing here is, this is whole milk. Not very much of this. I mean, most of the liquid will cook out. So just a little bit. A little bit of milk there. And this thing's preheated to 350. About 10 minutes. 10, 15 minutes. Um, it's really gonna crisp up on top of that cheese and the milk sitting on top of it and the butter mixed into that pasta. It's gonna really crisp up. So I'll show you in about 10 15 minutes. We'll pull that thing out and take a look at it. <laughs> Here's the finished product. Um, Goes melted just a little bit, and then we're not ready to eat quite yet, so we're just gonna put a little bit of uh, put some, some put them together. I'll show you about what a serving size is. I should, like I said, this is a 9 by 13, so you can get about six of these out of there. You cut that right down the middle, and then yeah, thanks for watching.